have all of the elements put together. I don't know what that was, I'm sorry. More NVIDIA GPUs, another brand new GPU company that we weren't expecting and Twitter doesn't have Jack. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. And I just wanna start off today's episode by talking about in the comments yesterday, there were a few people just discussing the fact that they didn't like the Christmas theme I started putting up because it's still November. We're past Thanksgiving. That is the acceptable time to start decorating. That's uh, This was as of Black Friday is when I had all this set up. If you don't like it, close your eyes and just listen to the sultry sound of my voice, okay? You. Now let's look into the sultry sound of new NVIDIA GPUs, but specifically this time the RTX 3050. Yes, the low end GPU that we're all expecting, not the RTX 2060 refresh that I talked about in yesterday's episode of Hot News. This is supposed to be the entry level card. $200 maybe, uh, probably not. Anyways, supposed to be launching sometime next year, hopefully in Q1, even though NVIDIA was preparing for it in January of last year and then just shelved it until October. And now we're starting to hear more details about it. Well, the latest information coming out about it is that it's going to be able to be in GTX 1660 Super, but still be worse than the new RTX 2060 refresh that's coming out. So better than 1660 Super, worse than 2060 Super is the general environment in which it's going to live, which likely means it's going to be worse than the RX 6600, but around the 6500 XT that's supposed to be coming out. Anyways, obviously pricing on all this matters a lot. Intel hopefully will have some sort of entry level GPU as well. But as we get more and more details about these lower end GPUs, I just find myself sitting here wondering, I uh, just, when can I buy them? I want to buy them. Please give them to me, NVIDIA. Please give them to me, AMD. I would like to purchase your goods. I don't know what that accent was, but let's move on to talking about how today is Giving Tuesday, my friends. After you've celebrated consumerism and capitalism on Black Friday and some Cyber Monday, nonprofits and other people are trying to get you to also donate to them. And that's specifically what I'm gonna ask for here. As you guys likely know, my son has a rare disease known as Syngap-1, which is a single gene mutation, which causes a lot of issues in his life such as intractable epilepsy that we cannot control with medication. In fact, my wife wrote a really great uh, post about this because November is epilepsy awareness and just talking about the struggles that we've gone through as parents and watching him grow up these last four years. I particularly like this one line she wrote where it says, we do not take waking up in the morning for granted. People who cannot control their seizures are at higher risk of SUDEP, sudden unexpected death in epilepsy, which often happens in sleep. Each morning, Emmett wakes us up with his trademark sing scream and we're grateful that he's made it safely through the night. It's been a real struggle, but I'm thankful for the charity stream that we just had where we raised over $150,000 to go towards research that could potentially start having treatments for our son's rare disease even towards the end of next year. But in case you wanna further that research this Giving Tuesday, I'll leave a link in the video description for you to donate to Syngap Research Fund, who 100% of the proceeds that you guys donate go straight to research. There's no overhead that's covered by the founders. There's no money that doesn't go straight into the hands of research. Researcher. So that will be linked in the video description. You can give in a whole bunch of different ways, including crypto. I've had plenty of people ask, how can we donate to you in crypto? Don't donate to me. Donate to Syngap Research Fund. They have a crypto option. You can do that. I'd appreciate your support this Giving Tuesday. So I appreciate that, but we're not done celebrating consumerism. It's time for UFD deals. I did my best to try to choose some deals that hopefully won't expire now that Cyber Monday is gone, especially since I am recording this on Monday. This is probably the only deal that I'm not 100% sure is gonna be there as of the time that you guys receive this video, but this inland one terabyte PCI Express 4.0 drive, 4.0 going for $104 at five gigabytes per second read and 4.3 gigabytes per second write. That is a solid deal right there. We also have the Samsung 870 Cuvo four terabyte, two and a half inch drive going for $330. In case you're looking for a new gaming headset, the HyperX Cloud Stinger is on sale for only $30 right now. That is a tremendous, tremendous price right there. And then lastly, Montec has their Air 100 Lite Micro ATX case, which is really affordable already at $60, has an extra 
12% coupon that brings it down to roughly $53 in case you're in the market for any of that. And if you want more GPU deals, well, we need more competition to help drive the prices down. And that's where we get yet another unexpected GPU company coming into the fray. We talked about last week how InnoSilicon was coming in with their Fangwa number one GPU, which is being worked on in collaboration with Imagination Technologies. And now we have a new company called More Threads announcing full GPU development capabilities and the first fully domestic Chinese GPU that's been developed. So according to their reports, this is all made in house, but this is due to the fact that they've been hiring engineers from all of the major companies such as Nvidia, Microsoft, Intel, Arm, and others. And they're actively looking to recruit right now, but their company name is More Threads with their purpose being to double the number of concurrent threads every two years. So there's not a whole lot known that they're really just trying to actively recruit people by launching this website and get people to be part of their team. But they also do have money. They were launched in October of 2020, but they've gone through investment rounds with raising $313 million in their latest Series A funding round. So there's money and already engineering talent on board, at least according to them. And if they can develop a new GPU in-house that can compete with the likes of everybody else, that would be amazing because we need more competition in the GPU space. They say that they want to provide a GPU computing technology and services to accelerate data center, edge computing servers, professional workstations, and high performance personal computing devices, which hopefully includes gamers in there somewhere. Not a whole lot to stake any hope on right now, but it does appear to be that there is some like legitimate cropping up of new competition in this space. Obviously, we're waiting on Intel to launch next year, and we're waiting on to see what that InnoSilicon GPU can do, but another promising seedling to look forward to. And now you can look forward to today's video sponsor, my friends. Today's episode of Hot News is brought to you by Azra and their brand new Z690 Tai Chi motherboard. The new Z690 has all of the design aesthetics that you would expect from a Tai Chi motherboard from ASRock, but it has support for Intel's brand new 12th gen chips, as well as all of the new upgrades that come with it, such as DDR5 6400 megahertz support, two PCI Express 5.0 slots with an additional PCI Express 4.0 slot so that you can get all of those upgrades that you need, and two Thunderbolt Type-C ports are gonna help you with expandability. You add onto that, it has a 20 phase SPS Dr. Moss power design, and you're gonna be able to deliver all the power to your chip even if you're putting in a 12900K and you wanna overclock it. It also has the killer Ethernet E3100 and Wi-Fi 6E support, both being able to deliver over two gigabits per second of network connection. And it also includes ASRock's graphics card holder to make sure that you don't have any GPU sag. So if you're in the market for a brand new 12th gen motherboard, you should check the link in the video description to check out ASRock's new Z690 Tai Chi. Big thanks to them for sponsoring today's video. Now, let's talk about crypto stonks. Uh, Bitcoin recovering a little bit, up 5.6% today to be at 58.125. Ethereum also recovering 6.4% to be at 4416. And Dogecoin also recovering 7.7% to sit at 21 cents. Meme stonks also doing a little bit all right. GameStop above $200 again to close up 1.2%. And AMC closing down just a little bit, 2%. I guess people didn't like the NFT thing that they're doing. Just, hey, you're wasting our money down to 36.87. Speaking of stock things, Twitter stocks went down because the CEO, Jack Dorsey, has announced that he is stepping down effectively as of today with the CTO of Twitter taking his place as CEO right now. He'll remain on the board for a little while to help the transition and to bring everything up to snuff. But Jack Dorsey is now out as CEO of Twitter. He was, this is not the first time he's out as CEO. He was kicked out in 2008, remained on the board, and then came back in 2015 when the previous CEO departed. And now, again, he's no longer CEO of Twitter. So we'll have to see whether or not this stays the cesspool it is or if it just keeps on trucking. Speaking of keeping on trucking, Nissan wants to keep on trucking with their EVs. They're not going to leave any stone unturned. Ha <laughs> ha, got it, Nissan Leaf. That's the pun. Anyways, they're announcing that they're going to invest $17.6 billion in EV technology over the next five years in order to get 15 new EVs launched by 2030, including some that might have solid state batteries, which is a technology that has not come out in any sort of commercial car, even though companies continue to flout it and say that it's gonna be here soon. I can't wait for the first company to actually release a solid state battery. Anyways, the only thing I have to say on the truck aspect is they released this render of a uh, concept truck and just, nope, no Nissan, nope. The what is this? 
just stop, Nissan, please. Nissan's been struggling lately because their designs are uninspiring. They're not updating to anything fresh. And I don't know if this helps, but Sony wants to help you play video games, especially if you're on one of their Xperia smartphones with them filing a patent to have a dual sense like controller attached to their Xperia smartphone so that you can play video games like an actual DualShock controller, but when you're actually on Android. And we now have more details about Nvidia's upcoming RTX 3090 Ti being confirmed by well-known leakers that it's going to have the new 21 gigabit per second GDDR6X to make sure it has a memory bandwidth of 1008 gigabytes per second, absolutely large. And we're expecting that to launch sometime in January. And I'm not going to launch this episode of Hot News any longer. It's over. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow for breakfast, my friends. Cheers.